Acts chapter 5. Thank the Lord for his goodness toward us today. May he work in our hearts tonight, both the will and the do of his good pleasure. If he stirs you about something, the, uh, at the end of the sermon, we'll have what we call an invitation. That's a good opportunity for you to, to express to the Lord and anybody else that if God's touched your heart, you want to do something about it. In Acts chapter 4, if you have that, we're going to just read six verses there. We're going to begin at verse 15. If you'll stand with me, please, in reverence for the reading of the Scripture. Acts chapter 4, you follow along silently while, while I read aloud, beginning at verse 15. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them. You ever been threatened for your faith? Amen. Not too many people have. Now, in America, not too many people have. We got, uh, we got threatened a couple years ago uh, to where authorities were telling churches they could not meet. There were 30 mm -hmm. authorities telling churches in some states they could meet, but they couldn't sing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They fined churches for singing. Yeah. Somebody ought to get indignant about that. Amen. God commanded us to assemble. Yep. Amen. God commanded us to sing. Amen. That's what God gave you a tongue for. Stick it out of them people when they tell you to do that. <laughs> They called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. What are you going to do when the authorities tell you to do something completely contrary to what the Bible says? And they said right here, they commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. You say, well, you ought to obey the authorities that are over you. I'm not going to obey the authority that's over me if the authority over them said for me to do something else. That's right. Amen. And God tops all of them. Amen. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. That's pretty interesting in verse 19. Said, Peter said, well, you make up your mind whether we should listen to you or listen to God. I want you to turn over a page or two in your Bible to chapter 5. Chapter 5 of Acts. And look at verse 27 got a friend of mine who who um, he's got a thing about freedom of the individual in the United States of America he just got right with the Lord about a year ago and, and he started getting back in church and all and I helped him find a church in his area and, and one of the things that motivated him when he went to choosing a church is he wanted to know whether you folks shut down or not <laughs> when the uh, government said you can't assemble and he said, if, he, if, if the one he went to shut down, he said, I'm not going there. Yeah. <laughs> Just because they say you can now. They didn't give you permission to do what God told you to do. Amen. Acts 5, 25 says, Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple yep. and teaching the people. Amen. <clears throat> well, I guess they broke parole. Yep. <laughs> of course, he wasn't out on parole. He just got out. Yeah. So it was a jailbreak. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people lest they should have been stoned. And uh, when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Our last verse we'll read is verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. Amen. We're going to use verse 28 for our text. If you want to look at it one more time before we pray. Saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. 
Would you bow your heads with me for prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for your wonderful grace and mercy. Thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who died for our sins according to the Scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. I thank you for that wonderful message being the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And I thank you for this uh, passage that we've just read where the apostles said we ought to obey God rather than men. Father, I pray that you'd help us that when the time comes to where we have to choose to disobey you or disobey them, whoever them is, that we'll disobey them, not you. Help us, Father, to benefit from our meeting together tonight. May it not be in vain. May we leave here having profited by coming to church. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Be seated. And I didn't, I didn't thank God publicly in our prayer, so I'll just once again embarrass her uh, publicly in my opening remarks. We're so glad that the Lord sent Sister Rita to our church Amen. this morning Amen. and that she joined our church. Amen. I think she might have taken it seriously because I said if you come three weeks in a row, we're going to have you anyway. Might as well go ahead and do it. Of course, we don't do that to anybody. But we're thankful. Thankful the Lord continuing to send visitors. Amen. And thankful for members as well. Pray that the Lord will work in this message, stir us up to go out there in the world get people saved. And uh, sometimes the charges that are brought against people aren't true. Yeah. Sometimes we'll hear about a conviction that a judge or a jury uh, makes that is un unjust. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can appeal to a higher authority and they will overturn that other authority. It's sad when you're convinced that a judge or jury has convicted somebody and punished someone unjustly. And that does happen. Many charges that are brought against God's people are not true. Right. For instance, you and I, as fundamental Baptists, we are not what is wrong with this country. Yeah. There are a bunch of politicians that think that you're the problem. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Right. There are politicians leading this country that think that you, fundamental Baptists, yeah. you right-wingers, yeah. are what's wrong with this country. Ahab accused Elijah of troubling Israel when he met him. He said, Art thou he that troubles Israel? And the prophet said, Boy, I'm not the problem. You're the problem. That's right. Amen. King Ahab was the real problem. One of the most wicked kings Israel ever had. Many charges that were brought against our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, during his earthly ministry were not true. Many charges that were made against the Lord's disciples in the book of Acts were not true. But the, but the charge that is found in our text, Acts 5, verse 28, was true. The disciples were guilty of what uh, they were charged with in verse 28. And that is, well, those will be the, the points of our message tonight, what verse 28 says. I will title the message, I want us to be guilty as charged. Amen. Now, the charges in verse 28 are actually two in number. I hope that encourages those of you that want a short message. <laughs> because those tar two charges that are made in the text will be the two points of my message tonight. <laughs> and I want us to be guilty as charged. The first thing, boy, cheer up, folks. That means number two just right around the corner. <laughs> the, first, the first thing is, I want Glenwood Baptist Church I want this preacher, I want all of our members to be guilty as charged, number one, of broadcasting our beliefs to everybody in this city. Amen. 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 They said, behold, first charge was, behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Yep. I realize that it's a big city for our size church to do that, but I'd like us to be guilty of doing that. Amen. To fill Jacksonville with our doctrine. Our doctrine concerning salvation is simply the gospel of Jesus Christ Amen. and salvation by grace through faith. We'll give you a couple ways we can do that. Number one is by public proclamation. 
That is, as we get the opportunity to get the ears of people publicly to take advantage of it. I got, uh, I got asked to speak at a retirement ceremony of, of somebody coming up, I think about another week and a half over at the Naval Base, going to get to say a prayer, but they said, I can see something right before that I pray. You folks pray. This is my opportunity to make a public proclamation. Amen. Amen. And uh, you mark her down. This is one preacher that intends, if I get the opportunity, to give the gospel, if nothing else. That's right. I've, I've got a lot of things I'd like to say about our country and very, things I'm very thankful for, but they haven't asked me to give a speech. They've asked me to give an invocation <laughs> with a fellow who's, who's retiring. But we can use every opportunity we can uh, to get the gospel out. Pray that God will bless us as we do it publicly. In Acts chapter 20, verse 20. By the way, what's, what's the correct vision? 20. 20. In Acts 20, 20, Paul says, and how I kept, oh, excuse me, in Acts 20, 20, it said, How I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Amen. That publicly is the first thing I want to concentrate on. Let's fill our Jerusalem, which is Jacksonville. Let's fill it with our doctrine. Public services like this are public preaching. Street preaching, radio, television, newspaper, tracks, billboards, the internet, and every opportunity that we can get to put the word of God out. Folks, there are a number of people who have walked the doors of this church because of our public proclamation right. of the word of God. Our, whether it be through the internet or whatever, it's gotten out there and people have come. Some have been radio, believe it or not. Yep. Personal confrontation is the other. <coughs> public proclamation than personal confrontation. Mm -hmm. I frankly believe more people get saved through personal confrontation than they do by a public proclamation. Yeah. Now, I know people get saved at church, and I understand that, but even at a church like ours, when we proclaim the Word of God publicly, I believe there's enough gospel given out in, in almost any service where a person could get saved uh, without being dealt with by anybody. Amen. Get saved right there in your pew. But even in our church, where we, I feel like we make the gospel as clear and plain as, as anywhere, and we do it repeatedly and persistently, and yet when somebody steps down this aisle, in almost every case, we take them aside, be sure they understand the Amen. gospel. Amen. Amen. It's just just the way I want to do it. Is I, want, I don't want somebody to be hurried through anything. I want them to be dealt with from the Word of God. And so their faith is not in... The, the word of the preacher or the word of the soul winner, but the word of God is going to read to them. Acts 20, 20, I've taught you publicly and from house to house. You know what that is? That's one-on-one, -on -one, nose to nose. Mm -hmm. My friend, if you want to grow in the Lord, ask God to help you to have the courage to talk to somebody that you know one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, across from the table at a restaurant, or the workspace, or wherever. One of the greatest uh, illustrations to me of somebody witnessing to someone one-on-one on, one on one in uh, the New Testament is the uh, Ethiopian eunuch who got saved under the witness of Philip in Acts chapter 8. He went into his car, and you just never know what the Lord might open up for you if you ask God to show you. Yeah. Lord, give me an opportunity. Show me an opportunity to witness to somebody today. Yeah. You know what that would be like, what, what, Philip said, what Philip did? It would be similar to this. It'd be similar to you being about to go into Walmart. God help you if you gotta go in there. <laughs> yeah. But let's say a better place, let's say Publix. <laughs> okay, yeah. but you're about to go into some local establishment and as you get ready to go into the establishment, you see somebody sitting down reading the Bible. Yeah. Now you can either go about your business and go do what you're gonna do, or you go up to him, and having read Acts chapter 8, you may consider doing this. You may consider going to him and say, do you understand what you're reading? That's right. Yeah. I have done that very thing before when God opened up the door. He didn't open up the door enough for me where I could sit down and talk with him for a long time, but in seeing him, I was, I was on the job, but in seeing him, I was able to be, be able to say that to him, and he, he said, well, I'm trying. Tell you what they did, I gave him a gospel track. A little while later, he, he greeted me and 
and uh, gave every indication that he got saved just from uh, personal contact. In homes, in places of business, in malls, in restaurants, in airports, in bus stops, in the schools, one-on-one, -on -one, everywhere, we ought to be witnessing to people. Amen. We ought to be doing what we can to fill our Jerusalem Amen. with our doctrine. That is, broadcast our beliefs primarily to this unsaved world out here in Jacksonville, primarily the gospel. Sure. Primarily telling them why Jesus died. Christ died for our sins. Amen. Amen. You believe that? Amen. You believe that's the saving message? Then Amen. tell somebody Amen. this week Amen. that Christ died for them. A fella came into a barber shop and, and uh, walked in there and got ready to sit down and said, Somebody tell me some good news. A man spoke up from behind his newspaper. He said, Christ died for sinners. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Man said, What? <laughs> he said, Christ died for sinners. Amen. You might get the opportunity. Do you know that some people do go into an establishment and ask? Somebody tell me some good news. Yep. What's the news? What's up? Amen. You've heard people say, what's up? Yep. Tell them heaven's up. Amen. I can tell you how to get there if you don't know. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That would indicate that another way we can broadcast our beliefs is by pure demonstration. That is, letting our lives adorn what our lips proclaim. It's been often said, you're the only Bible some people will ever read. That's right. You're the only Christian some people will ever see. Yep. Or know is a Christian. And as you've heard me quote this before, your talk walks and your walk talks. But your talk walks more than your walk talks. Sometimes you need to be careful. It may be going in the wrong direction or the right direction. Amen. I want to be guilty as charged of broadcasting our beliefs to Amen. everybody Amen. in Jacksonville. Amen. Number two, they were charged with this. And I want us to be guilty of that as well. Number two, I want us to be guilty as, as charged of bringing the blood of Christ upon everybody in our city. Amen. The second thing he said, number one, you fill Jerusalem with your doctrine. Amen. Then the second thing he said you've done is you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. And folks, I'm going to take that particular charge there and look at it in, in a couple different ways. One way we can take that and take that, make that guilt, us guilty of that is in responsibility. When it says you intend to bring this man's blood upon us, that is in the sense of making you responsible for someone else's death. And responsibility for somebody else's death brings their blood upon you. Some of you have read your Bible, you know what the cities of refuge were all yeah. about. Yeah. And you, you know what, uh, what it's about when, when uh, they uh, found somebody dead who was kind of in between cities. Mm -hmm. they, they tried to offer a sacrifice in the nearest city to try to clear them from the blood of that person. Yeah. The fact is, uh, people wonder, well, uh, who was it that actually killed Jesus? Everybody did. Right. Mankind did. The Jews did. The Roman soldiers did. Even you did. That's right. Amen. If you don't believe that mankind did that, give them a chance today. Yeah. I dare you. There's people in this country who would kill you yeah. for your Christian convictions That's right. That's right. if they could get away with it easily. If they were in power, right. they thought that your religion, as they would look at it, is a narrow religion that excludes, uh, and by the way, Christianity is exclusive. Yeah, right. Jesus said, make no bones about it, it's exclusive. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. <laughs> America, many of them, would elect a scoundrel to office in a moment and crucify Jesus Christ. Popular vote may be American, but it does not necessarily mean that it is righteous. Another way that the blood of Jesus Christ can be brought upon everybody in our city is not only by making them responsible as being sinners, that is in responsibility, but number two is in redemption. I'm talking about being covered. 
Amen. having the blood of Jesus upon them in the sense of being covered. Amen. Blessed is the man whose uh, iniquities are covered. Book of Romans says, Amen. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Yes, our sins are washed away, but one of the ways in which the Bible describes our salvation in the book of Romans is our iniquities are covered. Amen. You know what they're covered by? The blood of Jesus Christ. Our, blood, our sins are red like crimson. And the only thing that can blot out that stain is the red blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God looks through the red blood of His Son, all He sees is white, my friend. Amen. We're washed in the blood, but we're covered in the blood. I'm glad that the only thing that can remove the stain of sin is the precious blood of Christ Amen. as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Amen. And folks, if you and I don't warn the wicked that they're headed for hell in their sins and that Jesus is the only way, then their blood is on our hands. I speculated a little bit this morning in Sunday school talking about what Christians might be doing at the great white throne judgment. We won't be judged, but we may be there. We may be doing some things. And uh, I likened it to the, the Old Testament the prophet was compared to a watchman. And considering this thing of blood being on somebody's hands, bringing somebody's blood on them, the watchman was responsible for the blood of the wicked people who God killed if he did not warn them That's right. to turn around. Yeah. Now, if he warned them and they didn't turn around, they still got destroyed, but he, was, he did not have their blood on his hands. But if he did not warn them, God was righteous and coming down on these wicked countries, but he was going to require their blood in his hand. Yeah. But I don't exactly say what that was. I'm telling you, you ought to keep it in mind that God holds you and me accountable in Jacksonville. We have the gospel. Amen. The church of Christ does not. That's right. The Mormons do not. The Roman Catholics do not. They pervert it. They say that salvation is not by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. Roman Catholic Church basically tries to get you to keep all the sacraments and then still you're not saved. Mm -hmm. Get the priest to come and give last rites. Still you may not be saved. Right. So get your wife to try to pray out of purgatory <laughs> and still you may not be saved. Church of Christ people say that, that you got to hear, believe, repent, confess, be baptized and hold out to the end. Yeah. my friend Hugh Pyle wrote a book on the church of Christ and one chapter was called please drown me in the baptistry yeah. because church of Christ believes that's where you get washed in the blood yeah. it's in the baptistry but they also believe that if you get out of the baptistry and walk down the steps and trip cuss on the way down you're lost yeah. I'm not saying any Christian ought to cuss at any time but I'm glad that if I were to and I haven't been cussing but somebody said one time about being so mad about the devil that if somebody would write the words down, he said, I'd sign my name to it. <clears throat> yeah. I'm not saying you ought to cuss, but I'm just saying that the only way to be saved and be safe and secure if you're a church Christ fellow is to be drowned right after you get baptized in their mind. Yeah. But praise the Lord, in truth, I was saved two weeks before, before I ever got in that water. Amen. If I died between the time I got saved and the time I got in the water, I'd have gone straight to heaven. Amen. Amen. But it is a spiritual truth for you and me that we should carry the gospel. Yeah. These cults and isms are not going to carry the true gospel. They pervert the gospel. Right. The whole book of Galatians is about them. How that they say, well, faith is not enough. You've got to do this and that. In that particular context, they're telling them to be circumcised. But basically, what they want to do is put on them the whole law. Yeah. And basically what that is, they wanted to put on them the burden of living life in order to stay saved. Yeah. You and I, we have the truth. Amen. You need to take a stand out there in the world. Amen. I'll give you one verse on this to prove it to you from the New Testament from the man that we look at so much as an example of what a missionary ought to be. And that's Paul. Yeah. And Paul said that he preached the gospel of the grace of God. Yeah. That his ministry, he told about in Acts 20, he said he was going to 
to finish his course with joy to declare the gospel of the grace of God. And in Acts chapter 20, verse 26, he said, concerning the fact that he'd gone to everybody, in verse 26 he said, Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare to you all the counsel of God. I don't believe that Paul was saying that what made him pure from the old men, uh, blood of all men was he explained to them the origin of Satan and the fall of the angels. I don't believe what he's talking about that. I don't believe the Bible never says preach the whole counsel of God. Yeah. It says, I'm not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Amen. And I believe that all modifies you, not the counsel. Yeah. And I've never met anybody that I believe in all his lifetime. I've been preaching for a half a century. I don't believe I've preached all the counsel of God. Sure. I've not avoided any of it. But I believe I've preached it all to everybody I've preached to. I believe he was saying he was pure from their blood because he had warned them and told them the way of salvation. Mm -hmm. You've got sisters, you've got brothers, you've got mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, granddaughters, and neighbors. Right. That the only gospel they'll ever hear will be yours if you give it to them. Amen. The yeah. gospel of Christ. Amen. Are you doing it? Paul said, I'm pure from the blood of all men. I have declared unto every one of you the counsel of God. All the counsel of God I've declared unto you. He witnessed, that means he witnessed to everybody he met. The counsel of God he gave was the counsel of God about how to be saved. Amen. I don't believe he talked to lost people about tithing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Oh. I don't believe he talked to lost people about holy living. Right. I believe he talked to lost people and said, listen here, you're a sinner and you know it. And if you don't trust Christ as your Savior, you're going to die in your sin. Yeah. But the good news is that Christ died for your sin. Amen. Amen. According to the Scriptures, He's buried and rose again the third day. According to the Scriptures, you've trusted God to give you everlasting life. Amen. He said, from here on out, what you do about it is up to you. But I am pure from your blood. That's right. I'd like to ask you folks, if you will, let's work together and be sure that concerning these charges, that we as a church are guilty as charged. Yeah. Amen. People might know us for our stand on the King James Bible. They might know us by people coming and going and, and saying, there's something going on down there. I'd like to be known for these two things. Number one, that we do indeed intend to broadcast our beliefs to everybody in our city. Fill Jerusalem with our doctrine. Amen. And number two, bring the Lord's blood upon everyone in this city. Yep. They said, you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Yes, I do. Number one, in your responsibility, you're a sinner. Yep. Number two, in redemption. Amen. That blood can be on you. Amen. In a different way than condemnation. It can be upon you in redemption. Yep. Would you help me do that? Amen. Let's stand together, heads bowed. We're going to have an invitation. Let's